In session as it is afternoon, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good morning, good, good evening, whatever. Uh, we start with, you can see Seychelles. Yes. Uh, sea, sand, trees, sun. Next, Eduarda. Uh, so my presentation, I've been asked to talk a little bit about the NQF and the alignment of the Seychelles NQF to SADC uh, QF. So, uh, basically, we'll start with the context of NQF, overview and structure, the achievements, some of the achievements we've had with implementation of the NQF, and then I'll talk a bit about alignment and the lessons learned from alignment. <clears throat> so, uh, the idea to have an NQF and a National Qualifications Authority started in 2000 with the uh, government's national policy. Um, therefore, and the, the, the government's rationale for this, so why an NQF? Uh, so it was to be part of the government strategy to incorporate standards and quality into the national education and training system, because at the time, people were doing whatever. And the, this rationalization was also uh, it to be in terms of qualifications. So if I quote my colleague from uh, Mauritius, we had a jungle of qualifications at the time. So order, we needed to establish some sense of order and direction. And uh, the president of Seychelles at the time, in his budget address in 2004, reiterated the government's commitment for a national qualifications authority. Therefore, in 2005, 2005 saw the enactment of the Seychelles Qualifications Authority Act. This was followed by the establishment of the Seychelles Qualifications Authority, SQA, at the start of 2006. And SQA is a public body. It has regulatory powers and it operates at arm's length from the Ministry of Education. Of course, it, its act dictates that it has a board, a governing, governing board, and then that it is managed by a seal. Next. Next, Sarah. So the object of the SQA, its mandate, is basically uh, um, SQA is responsible for the NQF, the, its, its development, implementation, and its maintenance. And then it is also responsible for quality assurance, which, which springs directly from the government's pronouncement, the, the president's pronouncement. Uh, our NQF therefore was established in 2008 and this was followed by the regulations for the NQF uh, which became operative in January 2009. Next. Uh, so the structure of, the, the, of our NQF so first of all, it is a comprehensive system uh, and it is intended for the development, classification, registration, publication, evaluation, and articulation of quality assured qualifications. It establishes the regulations and principles that guide development of criteria, uh, development of qualifications. It also dictates the criteria to be met for qualifications to be recognized nationally and the conditions for learners to be certified. NQF also includes policies and regulations which guides all providers of education and training about the conditions necessary for them to operate. Next. So you can see the objectives of the NQF. So it's, it's to provide for quality assured uh, standards and qualifications. And then there is the recognition, of course, and credit for knowledge and skills acquired. Uh, it aims to ensure comprehensiveness in the recognition of learning and qualifications. It promotes an integrated approach to education and training, and it increases articulation of qualifications and mobility of learners within a coherent learning system. Next. So the NQF has, our NQF has 10 levels, the Seychelles NQF, not our Seychelles NQF has 10 levels. Uh, it is a 10 level framework with qualification types. Um, 
we, it starts from the primary certificate, which is level one, and then it goes up to doctoral, postdoctoral qualifications, level 10. There is a qualifications map, and this is the most visible part of the NQF. Um, Eduarda, can you show the next slide, please? I'll talk to it. Okay, you can see from, this is our qualifications map, and you can see from the diagram that it shows the architecture in terms of the number of levels on the framework. So you can see 10 NQF levels, the qualification types, you can see, the pathways to qualifications. These are, you can see the red arrows that goes diagonal, vertical, et cetera. And we have also the notional hours and the level descriptors, but level descriptors will be more prominent in the, of course, the um, descriptors. In QF descriptors. So we define our qualifications map as the structure of nationally approved qualifications in terms of defined levels and their descriptors and qualification types, notional hours, and pathways. The red hour rows show the pathways. Uh, in addition, so you can see from there that the qualifications map gives a clear idea of the potential academic or vocational route that a that qualification offers. The, the academic route would be from the white downstairs, upstairs you go to the blue, that's the academic pathway. And the colored, the other side, would be the vocational route. So we have pathways on our NQA, on our qualifications map. Uh, it, it also gives, therefore, a clear idea of education and training doors open and accessible because you can navigate your way, uh, possibilities in terms of education and training, and it also builds on a hierarchy of competencies with each level of, of, uh, of qualification becoming increasingly more complex, complex as progress is made up the pathway of the map. But you will see this, as I mentioned before, best in the level descriptors. Uh, next, Eduardo. Um, I've already talked about the top part. So in terms of notion hours, as with most others, we have direct contact time and non-contact time, which makes up the notion hours. And one credit is equivalent to 10 hours of learning. Next, Eduardo. So the level descriptors I mentioned before, the framework will have the level descriptors. These are statements used to describe a hierarchy of learning outcomes of increasing cognitive challenge in terms of, we have degree of complexity of tasks, reasoning and problem solving, knowledge, autonomy. And so can I continue? Yeah. So four areas. And here, it, this is an example. This is a sample of the level descriptors. So, which is in our, on our NQF, it is level six, which is advanced national diploma. And you can see the four areas, degree of complexity uh, of tasks, reasoning and problem solving, knowledge, autonomy, and responsibility. Next, Eduardo. Some of the achievements, which I'm sure most, most uh, countries will have the same, or similar, uh, we have made headway with standard setting. So we developed the standards for qualifications, registration of national qualifications on our NQF. We have over hundred now, uh, which we have been able to validate. That is a credit and place on the NQF. We started uh, uh, with the evaluation of qualifications with an uh, not evaluation, validation of qualifications with an evaluation of existing qualifications. As I said before, we needed to put some order in the jungle of qualifications. So that is why this exercise was necessary to start with. We also started with the recognition of prior learning in 2019, and we have had some success. Uh, we do recognition and evaluation of local and foreign qualifications. We are moving now, we, we, we have program validation, we do program validation, but we are moving now towards, we are going to change the term and it will be program accreditation. We do institutional accreditation. We have now six of the 12 institutions 
that is tertiary institutions accredited. Uh, as of 2019, what was before responsibility of the Ministry of Education has now become part of the SUL, which is school in inspection. In a way, it was supposed to be with SUA, but so we've started this. We also assist institutions in terms of quali quality assurance uh, to develop their IPS structures and processes. We do a lot of capacity building. We, we facilitate capacity building for institutions. And we do also develop, we develop our manuals, policies, tools, instruments to enable us to implement the various areas I have mentioned before, previously. Next, Eduarda. In terms of achievements as well, uh, we can see now that there is better and, and fairer employment payment. There is work project progression schemes and schemes of service since these are linked to NQF levels. So, so we can say that there is a lot of awareness of the NQF in Seychelles. Uh, the landscape of qualifications has been rationalized and aligned with the national system. Uh, and also there is value to each qualification because these are clear. We have the NQF, we have the qualifications map, we have the level descriptors. So employers are aware what the employees need to attain or to arrive at a certain levels of education and training. And also, as we always uh, mention, facilitation of lifelong learning. Now, when it comes to new development, there are two major events that have affected the developments intended by SQA. Um, since 2019, I can see. So first we have the COVID pandemic. Um, last year, we were allocated funding to review our NQF, but then COVID yeah. came. So this fund was taken from us. We gave it back to the government so that we could meet expenses of the country. This year, we still did not get the funding. So our NQF review, is on hold for the time being. The second major event is the elections in uh, October 2020. We had both the parliamentary and the uh, presidential elections at the same time. And this delayed work with the, the review of the SQA, which is now going to be a repealed. So re we the current act is now going to be repealed and there will be a new act, a new SQA act. But uh, when October came last year, we had already finalized everything to do with the act and it was ready to go to parliament for um, we call it enactment or whatever it's called. Uh, but with the new government and there are changes so for instance, there are agencies that have merged with together and this makes it, and yesterday at cabinet, it was announced that the tertiary education commission will be, so the dissolution of the tertiary education commission was announced in parliament. So uh, no parliament, cabinet, cabinet approved for this. And it was said as well that the responsibilities of the tertiary education commission will go partly to SQA, what is to do with quality assurance, and then partly to the Ministry of Education. So, which means now that we are working, but we're back working on the act before we take it to cabinet. So there will be delays. In addition, we've had two important uh, projects. We've had the review of our manual, which incorporates program and institutional accreditation. I mentioned before, uh, we are going to use the term program accreditation and the, it is there, it is in this review. Next. I'm trying to rush now. We come to the alignment of Seychelles and QF to SADEC QF. So first, we need to realize that alignment contains a number of targeted actions that member states need to undertake or to address. Uh, and these actions 
address each of the established alignment criteria. So alignment is, as you know, is based on evidence and it has to be presented in a structured and logical format. The static TCCA to assist member countries develop an alignment plan and roadmap and alignment timelines. We started off with a self-evaluation exercise that culminated into what we call a self-evaluation report. This consists of 10 criteria, each with their sub-criteria, and includes roadmap and action plan, plan to achieve each criterion. So this assessment report was intended to establish ready, readiness of countries to align to the TADEC US. Pilot countries were very important, very critical, and this is what helped us through. Uh, we provided support through capacity building workshops. We had two workshops, one for the self-assessment report and one for the alignment itself. And uh, the workshops were facilitated by SACWA. And at this point, I would like to thank SACWA so much on behalf of the pilot member states. This was in 2017 and 2018. Uh, we member country or pilot countries were supposed to appoint a, a national alignment committee. And in our case, the national alignment committee was appointed in January 2018 by the minister responsible for education. Next. Uh, this is just to show you the format of the report. This is was uh, given to pilot countries by uh, uh, SADEC TCCA. So we had to follow this format and thus fill in the information so that we could have this structured logical format. Next. And this is our road to alignment. This will be common to all. We had this, so we had to insert our own information. Uh, when we had the workshop, the second workshop in April at the bottom, 2018, this is where we started drafting the alignment report. And uh, the, the, what you, the milestones you see here are the milestones for Seychelles. So we can see we, we, we submitted our first report in uh, November, 2018. And uh, finally, this was approved in uh, October, 2019. So that was a very long journey. Next, Eduarda. So uh, we, I come to alignment, the lessons. First of all, government support and national commitment is a must if we are to succeed with the alignment. The alignment is extremely time consuming. And, and we must be super focused. When I say super focused, I mean dedicate blocks of time needed and stick to the action plan that you have for yourself, for your, for your uh, alignment committee as much as humanly possible. Otherwise there is no way you are going to meet deadlines established. We learned that it, there is information, but information and documentation are scattered. So one strategy that we adopted was to have a mix of division of labor and then committee work together, division of labor, and then have meetings where we meet, take stock in between, informal, use, um, what do you call that? Um, emails, whatever, WhatsApp, whatever, as much as possible to communicate. These are the sorts of things that we do, the, the strategies that we use to enable us to meet our deadlines. Uh, we, we learned that because there was this national involvement because uh, we were careful in selecting members of the National Alignment Committee and each member had a responsibility to sensitize their um, departments, their ministries, their agency, wherever. Uh, so, it, this resulted in national involvement and then it increased public awareness, knowledge of the NQF and qualifications, also the alignment process. Seychelles, in our culture, sorry, I just need some water. 
there is a there is a milestone for the alignment which says that we need to uh, post the draft report on our website for public comments but Seychelles in Seychelles website posting for public comments is not embedded in the Seychelles culture so we had to find other ways and means of supporting measures we did post but then we had to uh, identify supporting measures so that we could draw attention to the report so we use for example um, we 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 sent mass mail to pieces so that they know that this is there we we um, had uh, presentations discussions with immediate uh, stakeholders and so on um, we learned that to succeed with this alignment as well to to make the 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 populace so that the populace understands what it is all about we needed to be innovative in ways ways and means to involve stakeholders because alignment is a is the nature of alignment it's technical nqf is technical qa is technical okay so uh uh, for instance, uh, I had, I think, one or two television interviews, and I had to speak in Creole. So you can imagine the translation of the terms. And then we had several media activities as well. So we had to find ways to simplify what it is we were trying to do to ensure that the populace understands. Next. Um, the alignment process, we had 10 alignment criteria and underlying sub criteria. And I want to draw attention to two uh, criteria in particular. Uh, criterion five, this was about the 16 common QA guidelines of the SADC QA, with, which I'm sure everybody knows about. We had to align or uh, establish compatibility between our national QA framework and the QA guidelines of the SADC QA. Criterion two, this is where the most difficult to work was, and we learned a lot in terms of our NQA here. Uh, the criterion two says, uh, ask that we show that there is a clear and demonstrable link between qualifications level in our NQA and level descriptors of the SADC QA. Yeah, next. So essentially, this had to do with differences. We had the issues which brought about the lessons learned had to do with differences between frameworks under alignment. In this instance, the Seychelles and QF versus the SADC QA. Now, overall, we always have to bear in mind that one is a reference framework, whilst the other is a national framework on which qualifications based on qualifications types are registered. In a sense, it was a bit like comparing. We say we compare apples and oranges, but they both have are fruits, so they have similar characteristics. So that was the main overall issue that we needed to bear in mind. Now, what did we learn? So one, from this first point, the two frameworks, we learned that the SADEQF, because the SADEQF does not have a qualifications map or ladder showing the usual architecture of NQFs, and this complicated matters. In fact, the SADEQF, as we know, has no qualifications at all. So comparison had to be made between level descriptor and level de descriptor. Now, this was problematic as qualifications embody in and of uh, themselves what level descriptors mean in reality. And so comparison became, became very difficult. It is to be borne in mind that though level descriptors use a certain hierarchy of terms to denote increasing cognitive challenge, they are at the same time loosely worded so as to embrace as much as possible in the lab, in a level, that is the SADEQF. 
At the national level, the terms tend to be more specific. Next. A second point arising from these two types of framework. We saw that on the surface, there is a difference in categorization of level, the level descriptors. The SADEQF has categories of autonomy. Remember earlier I mentioned we have three categories. So the SADEQF has the categories of autonomy and responsibility, skills and knowledge. Similarly, our NQF has autonomy and responsibility and knowledge, but we also have reasoning and problem solving and degree of complexity of tasks, which are skills oriented. So this again, complicated matters. So this made the task of getting equivalences between the levels of both very difficult. Now the Seychelles NQF, as you saw previously on the qualifications map, has a track system with three, three, uh, three tracks consisting of general education track, um, <coughs> sorry, a vocational track and an academic and trading track. There is no track on the SADEC QF since the aim is not to cater for a specific type of qualification or to hoist the level of one qualification type. The aim of the SADEC QF is more generalized, which is simply to broadly compare and translate competency levels so as to enable qualifications to travel. This compounded the difficulty of comparison. While it is not always easy to decipher the increasing cognitive challenge of the SADEC QF, because of the loose, looser language being used, one could state that it was present mostly from level to level. Uh, Eduardo, can you move to the next? Uh, yes, I want to talk to this one. So when you look at this one, this is the diagram of our alignment. You can see the arrows, um, the red, do you see the red red lines? On one side, the left, there is the static QF, and then the other side, the Seychelles and QF. Okay, now when we did, you can see the red arrows. We could see that the cognitive challenge, challenge increased only very slightly between level one and level two on the SADEC QF. So that's to do with the level descriptors. And this it made it equivalent to level one on the NQF. You can see that both levels one and two of SADEC QF are equivalent to level one of the Seychelles and QF. You can see the red arrows. Now, when it comes to, and this is a peculiarity of the Seychelles National Qualifications Framework, the level of cognitive challenge increase on our NQF, the level of cognitive challenge increase on our NQF fell so that it caught up in a way with the SADEC QF at level three. Do you see that? So now, once we get to level three, we are equivalent, so to, we are aligned. When we go to level four, there was a pro problem since the Seychelles and QF, the level descriptors of our NQF, there are two sets for level four, one set for vocational and one for academic. What did we learn? So when comparison was made, we found that our NQF TVET descriptors, vocational descriptors matched level two of the SADEC QF. And the academic level descriptors matched level four of the SADEC, uh, SADEC QF. That is why if you, come, if you look at the two level four, you will see that there are two arrows. One goes to level two and one goes to level four. Otherwise, um, so uh, uh, therefore, uh, this also made comparison very difficult, very, very difficult or less harmonious, resulting in an unusual comparison ladder, as you can see. So making such match, I can say, was a complete headache. But after level four, things flowed. So match was okay. Uh, 
next. Okay, so uh, if we conclude with this alignment, what did we learn from this overall learning? We learned that there is a, a demonstrated uh, demonstrable link between qualification levels in the Seychelles and QF and level descriptors of the SADEC QF. Alignment was structurally, conceptually, and linguistically. So the NQF, our NQF is aligned to the SADEC QF structurally in terms of comparison, in terms of architecture of the two frameworks, in terms of levels, number of levels. Uh, okay, so both have 10 levels and level descriptors. Second, our NQF is aligned to SADEC QF conceptually. Well, this is where concepts are examined to see whether they are con there are conceptual links between the two frameworks. And we found that there are more in common than different. Linguistic alignment, level to level analysis to see whether the 10 NQF levels are aligned with the 10 SADEC QF level. As I mentioned before, levels one and three of the S uh, levels one and levels three to 10 of the SNQF are aligned to the SADEC QF linguistically, whilst level two of SNQF closely matches level four of the SADEC QF. This is what we found out. Next. Therefore, in conclusion, what are our overall learning? We learned that there are strengths as well as weaknesses with the Seychelles and QF. The exercise confirmed deficiencies that we knew existed, but also new deficiencies that we did not know existed with our NQF and our also QA system. The alignment also identified good practices, maybe that we were taking for granted with our national QA, uh, QA system. It identified the need to be able to do such an exercise. There is a clear need for easy access to information documentation. So here comes the importance of centralizing information and documentation. Who appoints the NAC? This is NAC, the National Alignment Committee, sorry. This is critically important because in our case, the decision to have the Minister of Education appoint the National uh, Alignment Committee, because it is national, was to get government commitment. We could not have SQA or the SQA board appoint the National Alignment Commitment. When we did this, so the minister took the idea, the concept to cabinet and so on. So we had the support of government. Um, alignment, uh, the exercise that we've done has made us realize that we can use or, and we will use the alignment as a basis for review of NQF and for strengthening our national QA system. Now on this note, I would like to thank SACWA, yeah, in addition to, of course, SADEC TCCA, TCCA SACWA, uh, the XCO, for facilitating the workshops, the training, but also for the support. In particular, I want to make a special mention to Pauline Jackson at SACWA. I understand she's no longer there, but she has been the wind beneath our wings that has taken us forward to enable us to complete this exercise successfully. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Fiona, for this uh, presentation and for um, discussing so well the lessons learned from the alignment uh, process. This is a very important information exactly in the framework of ACQF, which is also a, an overarching framework is going to be. Thank you very much.